Falcon 9 is in startup. Falcon 9 is in startup. Launch director will give that final go here shortly. Go for launch. Launch director has given that final go for launch. All systems are looking good. Let's listen into the terminal count and watch as Falcon 9 takes our 52 Starlink satellites to orbit. T minus 30. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition. Lift off of the Falcon 9. Go Starlink. Stage one chamber pressures are nominal. Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Vandenberg Space Force Base, carrying our stack of 52 Starlink satellites to orbit. Moments ago, we throttled the engines down in preparation for max Q, or maximum aerodynamic pressure, which we should see in just a few seconds Open here. The supersonic. Max Q. We did just pass through Max Q. Now we will have three events happening in quick succession. First, we will have main engine cutoff or MECO, followed by stage separation and second engine startup one. Now first, main engine cutoff or MECO is where all nine of the M1D engines shut off to slow the stage down in preparation for stage separation. This is where the first stage and the second stage separate with stage one starting to make its way back down to Earth for landing, while stage two continues on its journey to orbit. And back chill is started. Now the third event is second engine startup one, and this is where that single MVAC engine on the second stage lights up and propels the second stage along with the Starlink satellites to orbit. Just a few seconds after Second engine startup one, there will also be fairing deployment, so you'll want to keep an eye out for that. Miko. State separation confirmed. And back ignition. You just saw stage separation, main engine cutoff, and second engine startup one. There fairing separation confirmed. There you can see the fairing halves popping off, revealing our 52 Starlink satellites. We have had successful fairing deployment. And again, SpaceX has reflown Falcon fairing halves since November of 2019. And again, that was our third flight for one of those halves and the fourth flight for the other. We will be attempting to recover those halves once again when they return to Earth. Now, as stage two heads towards its targeted drop-off orbit, stage one will execute two burns in order to make its way back down to Earth. The first is the entry burn, where three of the M1D engines will reignite, and this helps to slow the stage down as it re-enters the upper part of the Earth's atmosphere. The second burn is the landing burn, and this is a single engine burn that brings the vehicle speed down rapidly in order to land on our drone ship. If you're just catching up with us, we have had a successful launch of Falcon 9 from Vandenberg Space Force Base 
and you're looking at a live view of Falcon 9's second stage as it delivers our Starlink payload to orbit. Stage 1 is currently making its way back to our drone ship, Of Course I Still Love You, which is stationed in the Pacific Ocean. Now the Merlins on the first stage are optimized for sea level, and these achieve 190,000 pounds of thrust during ascent and descent. And in contrast, the MVAC engine that you see there is optimized for 220,500 pounds of thrust in vacuum. The main difference between these two engines is just the size of those nozzles. On the first stage, Falcon 9 is equipped with four hypersonic grid fins, which are positioned near the top of the stage, and these are used to help steer the first stage as it returns to Earth. Both vehicles are following nominal trajectories. We are about a minute and a half from the start of our stage one entry burn. Again, this is a 20 second burn that will slow the first stage down as it enters the Earth's atmosphere. The Falcon 9 first stage is also equipped with four landing legs made of state-of-the-art carbon fiber with aluminum honeycomb. These are placed symmetrically around the base of the rocket and deployed just prior to landing. Second stage continues to look good there, carrying our payload of 52 Starlink satellites. As we come up on our first stage entry burn here in about 30 seconds, just a reminder, it is a three engine burn and it is meant to slow the first stage down as it hits the thicker layers of the Earth's atmosphere. Stage one entry burn startup. There's the start of our stage one entry burn, 20 second burn. Both vehicles are following nominal trajectories. Stage one entry burn shutdown. Did just have a successful stage one entry burn. Now for those who follow along- Stage one flight termination system is saved. For those of you who follow along, you'll know that the soot on the rocket indicates that it's been flown before. You can't quite see it in those views from the first stage right now, but when the rocket grade kerosene or RP-1 used to fuel Falcon 9 burns, it's actually carbon based, so it generates soot. And now as the booster approaches its landing site during descent and performs its long re-entry burn, which it just did, it actually flies through its own plume and the soot is deposited on the booster. If you watch, from the, feed, if you watch the feed from the onboard camera during landing, um, you can hopefully see the soot sticking on the lens. Stage one landing burn should be starting here really shortly, just a few seconds. Again, this is also a 20 second burn. Vehicles and terminal guidance. Stage one landing burn. Stage two flight termination system is saved. We did just start our stage one landing burn. Stage one landing leg deploy. Seco 1. 
you can see we did just have successful first stage landing of our 98th overall orbital class stage rocket. Stage one landing confirmed. And this includes both Falcon 9 and heavy first stage landings. We heard the call out during that stage one landing that we did have second engine cutoff one. We're just waiting for confirmation of a nominal good orbit. orbit insertion. We just heard the call out for nominal orbital insertion. So next up, we will be having payload deploy at about T plus 15 and a half minutes. Unfortunately, at that time, we won't have ground station coverage, which means we won't have a visual or data confirmation of a successful deployment until we acquire signal at our Mauritius ground station at about T plus 15.